Hello and welcome to DBF Import 2.0. This is our first major update to DBF Import and there are a lot of new features and capabilities but a lot easier to use in the overall scheme of things. So we're pretty excited about the new functionality and how well it works. So let's go ahead and get kicked off. Let's go over the interface really quickly. As you can tell, we have a brand new interface for DBF Import 2, and it's pretty straightforward. You come in, you pick the file type that you want. Notice that when you come in, you can pick CSV, XLS, XLSX, and those are the supported files at this time. From there, you can pick what kind of database that you want to support, what level of the engine you want to support, and then as far as the full path and database name, this will actually take the name and add the DBF extension to it and put it into the same as the input directory. However, you can click the Save As button and you can decide where you want to put the DBF and any memo files that would go along with it if there was any generated in the data. Once you have picked the type of file that you have, you can then pick the options for that file and when you're satisfied, you can hit the Execute. Now, one of the things that we try to get across to people is if you want to have the best experience with DBF import, the best experience is to have good data. Because what we try to do is we try to ascertain what kind of data you have and then build a database off of the data that you give us. So let me give you an example of what I mean. If we come in and look at some simple data here that we have, we have this email CSV, and I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. And it's associated with Notepad right now, which is fine, but it's just a bunch of emails. But notice there is no header up at the top of what kind of database it is or what kind of field it is or anything like that. Now, we have the ability to import this type of data with no header, but it uses generic field names. So let me go ahead and let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Let's go ahead and click on our button. We'll come into our email addresses, CSV, and notice CSV is set up. Notice also up here there's a CSV button. If you want to know more about CSV, you can click there. There's also a button on the information of the different DBF tables if you want to do that. And then, of course, there's also the address part right here of we're going to put it to the same location but with a DBF. Now, in my options, I'm going to come in and I'm going to say header row exists, and I'm going to say no. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and hit the OK button, and then I'm going to hit the Execute button. Here in a second, it'll scan, and a few seconds later, it's going to come up with a, it's completed, do you want to clear the details? Now, this is important for one reason. If you don't want to clear the details, that's fine, and let's go ahead and say no. The reason why you may want to do that is you, you may want to come in and actually make multiple copies of your DBF and you just want to name them something different or you want to put it in multiple locations. So this gives you the ability without having to go and double do, you know, double check everything. So if I, I wanted email addresses one, I can now go out there and if I hit the execute button, it would generate an email addresses one. But before we get into that next step, let's go ahead and see what happened. So I'm going to bring up DBF inspect. We're going to open up our file. We're going to open up C and we'll go to our test data here. And there's our email DBF. Now notice it went ahead and added field zero to it, and then it added all the email addresses to it underneath that. Pretty straightforward. It fixed it. It, it was go ahead and works the way you would expect it to. But what I would rather have is something that showed the right data. So I might want to put this in as email underscore ADD. Now I'll come in and save it. And then we'll go ahead and minimize that. And now we've got the same thing that we had before, but now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to keep it as it was. I'm going to come in here to my options and I want the header record to say yes now. Say OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and execute it. Now it's going to go through that same process here in a few seconds. We should get a total number of records generated. Yes, we want to go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and look at the DBF inspect. Go into DBF and let's go ahead and pick our email addresses one that I did before. And now notice up here it has the email add and now we have a little bit better understanding of what that is.
So that shows you how quick and easy it is to go ahead and use DBF import. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and run DBF import 2 and now this time we want to go ahead and use an XLS spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and open it up. We'll see that we have an AF1. Notice it shows up in our preview over here. It's got data inside of there. We'll say open. We'll go ahead and leave all this. There's no real need to set any options for this. This is a fairly good looking table. It's got a header. It's got pretty good data throughout the process. And then when we're ready to go, hit the execute button. Here in a few seconds, this should go ahead and say it's ready. And we say go ahead and clear. Go into DBF inspect real quick and open this up. And if we go into here, you'll notice that we have a AF1 DBF. Open that up and there's our data that's just as you would expect it to be uh, inside of there. So that gives you a quick and easy overview of how to use DBF import 2. Idea is, is to come in, pick the file, pick your level of the database engine you want to use, pick the output and the file name that you want to put your new database into, and then go ahead and execute the process. You can go ahead and set the options for your files if there are specific things that you're looking for. And then from there, it should be as straightforward as going out there and clicking on things and finding out what's going on. So as you can see, DBF Import 2 takes it to the next level. We're pretty excited about the capabilities and functionality, and we hope you'll enjoy using the product. Thanks a lot for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.